Hello and welcome to 100 Days of Summer. I'm Christian Page, thanks for joining me. So yesterday we kind of wrapped up on, well as much as we could, on projection systems and why projection works really well in light controlled environments. Um, and like all of these topics and all of the technology we, de we deploy, I could probably spend 100 days talking about each one. Um, there is so much to cover, so I'm doing my best uh, to cover as much as I can to give you little insights as to what's being deployed in Tokyo and what gets deployed at major events. So, but if you do have further questions, please just drop them in the chat, instant message me, email me, and I'll do my best to answer them, for, answer your questions. And if I can't answer it, I certainly know the people who can. So today we're now gonna to go into probably one of the most sort of important and game-changing technologies that, hap that it was introduced in the 1980s. And this is the reference to the video board. Now, I can't imagine going to any event nowadays without having a video board, either one, in, one in, at both ends of the stadium. Um, maybe you might have four depending on the event. You might have them above the field of play. You'll have them at the back of the stands. But essentially, they become an essential component of any major sport or sport event. And certainly at the Olympic Games, I've seen that evolution as the technology's evolved and improved. And the ability for us to deploy more of this has certainly made it a, a, quite a game changer. Also, the technologies have converged. We've seen the ability now to take scoreboard information and we've turned that into video in much the same way as we display the video, to video content. So all of this is making it much richer for the, for the spectators in the stadium and enabling us to really engage the audience in ways that, you know, pre-80s we probably weren't able to. It was really much about, level. we focused on the sport, but if you were sitting at the back of the stands, you know, you had the scoreboard information, but really anything else was, was quite limited. But what's enabled this? Well, in the, as I mentioned, in the, in the 80s, the technology evolved and the first video board technologies were based on CRT. So those, these were flood beam cathode ray tubes. But for want of a better technical way of describing it, imagine these, these are itty bitty tiny televisions, uh, components like the, like the ones you used to have in the, the big TVs, the big cathode ray tube TVs. Um, they miniaturized this and turned it into an ability to, to make it pixels and colors, to make the RGB, which makes us the white. Um, and these are what the sort of forming parts or the, the foundation building blocks of what were the original um, video boards. Roll forward 10 years uh, into the 90s, so we had, they had the evolution of the LED, the light emitting diode. So this enabled them to, to create brighter images because we were able to use and smaller pixels building a building an image with much more pixels and much greater resolution giving us better brightness better contrast and all of those things we also then you know there's been and you know, i talk about the the video and uh, video board forefathers um you know people like my good friends like dave crumb frederick opsoma uh, graham burgess bob cronum uh, you know i could the list goes on of people that i've worked with over the years who've really been integral in making this technology available for sport events, but all major events, because they've designed the frames that enable it to be going to touring rigs, making it possible for us to ship it around the world and, and certainly to install it rapidly at the Olympic Games. So I mentioned these guys because I think they've all played a key part in this industry. And one of the the exciting things that I've been I've been fortunate to be involved in, we'll go in a little into the different ways in which this technology has been evolved is when I think about the past games, when I think about uh, the Sydney games, where mostly the LED boards, the video boards, were used in live sites. Uh, we had a few in the stadiums, but we roll forward to Athens, we had a few more in the stadiums. The, 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 the ability of the technology was able to be deployed. If we roll forward to London 2012, where we had video boards in every venue, multiple video boards in, mo in many of the venues, uh, and then we roll forward now to, to Rio, where it was a super exciting project where I was working with Omega, and we converged all of the video boards and scoreboards. And this was then a, a major step change, which in terms, in terms of re improving the quality of the scoreboard information into video technology. So the evolution and like I say, the importance of video boards and LED has been quite dramatic on the industry. And if you want to know more, um, there's a really good series uh, available of articles uh, produced by Matthew Ward um, that really goes into the, the technology. He's done a great job of kind of pulling all this information over the last sort of, sort of 40 years of development of the modular uh, display systems, uh, where they've come from, but also where they're going. Uh, so like I say, I'll 
put it in the, I'll put a link in the, in the bottom of this post just so you can now check that out because like I say some really great information uh, to get further understanding of how this has all gone together so I'm Christian Page love having you with me on these uh, these this journey as we count down the last 100 days towards the Tokyo 2020 games um, and wherever you are stay safe stay healthy and bye for now <laughs>